So, seeing as it's uh, condensation season, it's time to talk about PIV units, positive input ventilation. I have kind of uh, another video on this channel where I speak about the suitability of it for your house. So watch that video if you want to know, is your house suitable? This video is more focusing on this PIV unit um, and kind of just some hints and tips really about what to look out for and why this might be a good unit as well. So this unit is made by a company called Safeguard Europe. It's the dry zone cube loft unit. And this is what you get out of the box. You get one PIV unit, some ducting, a diffuser with blanking plates, two, switch to your spur, pads, which go under here, screws, and the instructions, very important. Right, okay, so PIV unit, quick, quick uh, reason as to how they work and all that kind of stuff. So, outside the air is driving inside your house because in our house we had loads of moisture, things like that. Outside you're going to get a bit more dry air. If that goes into your roof space, most roof spaces must be well ventilated. If they are well ventilated, PIV unit will do its job because this unit. Some people say, oh, is it an extract fan? No, it's not. It doesn't suck that way. It actually sucks into here. And when I say suck, it's that fan there. That's a centrifugal fan. That spins around and that is pulling the air through this filter, basically. So you've got a filter that wraps all the way around the unit. And that is where the air comes in. So the air in the roof space comes through this filter. So any contaminants go into here. These filters are changed typically between three and five years. It depends where your pot is located. If it's on a busy main road, it will need changing quicker. So there we have the filters. Very easy to change. One top tip, a lot of PIV units, when you take the filter off, often this piece here comes off. It's like a, a Velcro. I find that they come unstuck over time. With this unit, personally, I find it really good. I've not had a problem with, with that happening. I can change these filters really quick. I don't have to replace the Velcro bit, so that's pretty good. So yeah, so the air goes through there, and it then comes out here. So if you look really closely, there is a fan, fan there, and then we also have a heater element in here. So the heating element just takes the chill off the air, because if the air in the roof space is like a few degrees, it's going to be pretty cold. This takes the chill off, so when it pumps the air through the ducting, which goes onto there, down into this diffuser, it means you're not getting freezing cold air going into your house. But you won't be getting hot air either. You don't put your hand under it and feel that's lovely and warm, it's 20 degrees or something silly like that. It's taking the chill off. Okay, so yeah, through the ducting, into here. It's quite a neat diffuser. These are the blanking, blanking plates. These are useful. Stops the air basically going out of two of the sides. So it might be if you have a smoke alarm nearby, you need to make sure that the air does not hit that smoke alarm. So you can have a blanking plate. Also, if it's like a narrow uh, hallway or landing and you want the air to go this way and that way, you don't want it to hit the walls too quick. So if there's a wall here and a wall there, you don't want it, if the air hits the wall too quick, you'll feel a draft. So you put these blanking plates in. Really easy, but just literally slot up and down like that. You can do it with one hand. And that clips onto there, which I can't do with one hand. Um, here we have the electrical connection bit, switch to use uh, 3 amp. So that is wired into there. That typically will go on to uh, normally like a lighting circuit or something like that. In the box of tricks, we have these sponges. So this unit is mounted onto a the, onto the joist, basically a ceiling joist. So sometimes you can put a baton, a wooden baton across, sit it on there, and use these pads and the screws. And the pads will stop any kind of vibration going through the joist into the ceiling below. You also have some PVC tape, which will help connect the ducting, flexible ducting, to here. Another good tip: when you fit this ducted, don't have it basically taut as possible. Nice and tight because then um, the air flows through it quicker, so a bit more like that. Don't have it all bunched up like that. Cut it down if you don't need it as long. Okay, so this unit is really quite forward, forward, straightforward, nice and simple and easy to use. Some units have lots of gimmicky settings and it can do all sorts, but ultimately 
In reality, this is a fan in a box with a filter. You don't need a lot of the settings. It's all about getting the airflow moving the property. This has one to four, and you literally press this button and it goes up and down between them. Now, these will run from, I think it's about 21 litres a second to about 40, around that kind of number, which is quite a substantial amount of airflow. I can't see many properties being on number four. My top tip is normally start low. Start low, see how you get on, because then you're not wasting energy and things like that. You can always move it up. It's always best to start low. You also have the temperature thing here. When it goes over 25 degrees, the unit goes into standby because in your loft in summer, it's going to be very hot. You do not want boiling hot air being blown into your house. There's also a little digital display here. This tells you the number, the speed setting, and it will also tell you how many hours that this unit's been switched on for. So very handy to make sure that no one's been tampering with it. Just press this button here. So very, very simple, really simple unit. Like I say, easy to change the filters, build qualities, good, and you get everything you need. And the diffuser, I quite like this diffuser. I think the, when it's fitted, obviously you're only going to see from this bit here to there on the ceiling. You're not going to see the spigot bit that's hidden away. It's very discreet looking. Fits in really well. Um, so yeah, so I think this unit is a pretty good one. I would use this. I do use a few of us as well because sometimes depending on the loft hatch size will dictate which unit I use um, and again some some units have controls in different places which make it easier for other people so it, for me I'm not uh, about just using one unit and one unit alone you know if you if you look on my website some of the other videos you will know when you can see which other units I use um, but I have to say I do like this unit and I will be using it and I have used it in the past and they do last quite a long time. They, they're they pretty simple. Because again, I think the more complicated the unit, the more can go wrong with it. This is a simple piece of kit. You set it up right, and if your home is suitable, so watch my other video, is my home suitable for PIV? If it is, there's no reason why PIV shouldn't do the job. But just remember, there's plenty of other ventilation options, and it's not always about PIV. It's not always the right answer, but it definitely is something that can work. So, Hopefully you've got something out of this and um, seeing what this particular unit's about. But uh, like I say, all PIV units generally operate in the same way. So here we go, the Safeguard Cube Loft PIV unit.